Hello everybody, my name is Brandon. Welcome back to Cine Fashions, where we talk all things media. And I'm back today to once again talk about some 2022 films that I just ended up missing last year. So this is the third video in this series, and I'll be talking about three 2022 releases. I'll also talk about a 2020 release, just because it's a, a prequel that I needed to see before I could see the 2022 release. So I figure I'll talk about that one as well. Before I get into this, so if you guys have a quick second, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. But with that said, let's not waste any more time at all. Let's dive right in to part three of my 2022 catch up. All right, so the first one out the gate here is a streaming pick from Hulu. This is Prey, directed by Dan Trachtenberg. So this, of course, is the prequel to the Predator series. I am a huge fan of the Predators and Alien movies. I love them. I even like The Predator, the most recent one prior to this, I guess, so the second most recent. I know that one got hated on, but I thought it was really enjoyable. So I was really looking forward to checking this one out because this is Predator, but set in the 1700s. We follow this tribe. It is led by, I believe her name is Nauru, and she is tired of sitting on the sidelines. She does not want to be at home and like do the cooking and cleaning. She wants to be out hunting with her brother. Her brother like leads this hunting group that goes out and tries to fetch food for the, for the camp, and that's what she wants to be a part of. She wants to contribute in that way because that's what she is good at. She likes hunting. And so she ends up following her brother out one day while he goes hunting with his group and then sees something that she can't quite explain and that's obviously going to be our predators with this crazy advanced tech for, especially for the 1700s. And so we are following her as she is trying to survive against this predator, her and her and her brother specifically. So this was a fascinating movie to me. Like the idea of putting predator back into the 1700s on the Great Plains, like what a unique idea that works really well, in my opinion. I thought this one did a really good job of establishing more predator lore, which is exactly what what it set out to do, but still feel like very much so a part of that same universe that we've all come to love and know. So I thought they did a really great job with this. Amber Midthunder plays our leading character here. She is the Arnold Schwarzenegger equivalent, and she does an excellent job in this role. I think she just fits what you're looking for in a role like this really well. She's an extremely strong character on her own. She is not going to take any, you know, BS from anybody around her, and she's not scared of anything. And so I think she does that really well. Just the, like her look, the way she holds herself, her demeanor, it really fits this character or this archetype that you would want to see in this role. I also liked her dynamic with her brother. Now, could there have been more made of their relationship? Maybe more with like the mother character in this because she is back at home wondering what's, what's going on with her children, but it's obviously just a much different time. So it's not quite the same as it is today, at least on the outside as it would be today. But still, it was interesting, and I would have loved to have seen more there, but this is an action sci-fi flick. Like, you're not, you're not going for depth. You don't watch Predator movies for their depth, right? You watch them for the action, and the action in this is done really well. There are some really cool death scenes in this, some really cool kills. I think the tech mixed in with that, like, 1700s feel is just really awesome. Like, it's a great juxtaposition, and so this was just a thoroughly enjoyable film. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. Nothing more, nothing less. It's a good, fun Predator movie, and a lot of people would probably consider this, if not the only good movies in this series since the original, at least the only good recent one. And again, I liked Predators when I saw that in theaters, and I enjoyed The Predator when I watched that one, and so I'm in the minority, but I think this one fits into that universe really well and just adds to the lore, which is exactly what I was looking for. So I ended up giving Prey, directed by Dan Trachtenberg, four out of five stars. Next up is one that I'd been looking forward to for a while because it's a one location film, which I love, and it is one I picked up recently on Blu-ray, so I just wanted to watch it. This is Fall, directed by Scott Mann. I will say, before I start talking about Fall, Scott Mann directed another film that I loved. It's called Heist from, I believe it's 2015, but I had no expectations going into this. It was like a random scroll through Netflix. I ended up putting it on, and I loved it. 
it. I thought it was so good. I think I gave it like four and a half out of five stars when I watched it. I was just so taken by it. I loved it. And so while Fall isn't quite as good as Heist, I definitely am excited to see what else this director has in store for us. So we are following our two characters here, Hunter and Becky. They are thrill seekers. They love climbing mountains and in this case, a 2000 foot radio tower that's been abandoned. In the opening scenes, there is a tragedy. And so our one of our main characters goes into the state of depression. And in order to help get her out of her funk, they decide that they are going to climb this radio tower again. They're going to do this thrill seeking once more. And I'll also mention Hunter is a YouTuber. And so that's a part of it as well. She's like filming everything she's doing in order to post it to YouTube. So I thought that was pretty funny as well. Anyway, these two are climbing to the top of the tower and they get stuck. One thing leads to another and they're stuck there, of course, with very limited resources and virtually, well, seemingly, I should say, no way to get down. And that's what we're trying to you know, figure out. Will they survive and how? So this is pretty much a typical survival film, a typical one location film. And so if you like movies like that, you'll probably enjoy this one because I know I did. Now, at first, I didn't like these characters at all. I thought they were just kind of obnoxious. The way they were written, I just didn't enjoy them as individuals whatsoever. And there is like something that's introduced, which is just so predictable and so obvious as the film's going on. But then there are other things in this where it, it really threw me for a loop. I didn't see coming at all. So it kind of rides that line a little bit between predictable and the complete opposite of that. So this is one of those films where if you've seen movies like this before, you probably have an idea of where it's going, but it still might add in some elements that do surprise you. And so that was cool. I enjoyed that aspect of it. And I'll say as the characters went on, I did enjoy Enjoy them a little bit more. We find out that Becky is a pro wrestling fan. I mean, what's not to love there, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. And on top of that, after the characters did grow on me a little bit, I loved what Scott Mann was able to do with the tension in this film. Just the way he built it up, I thought worked so well. Those shots, which of course were, you know, in front of a green screen, but boy, they looked good. And they made my stomach drop at points. I found myself holding my breath at other points. Uh, this is a bit of a slow burn, it's a one location film though, so you should probably expect that going in, but it might be a little bit too slow for some, but I enjoyed it. I, I liked what they did with this. I liked where they went with it and how things played out. And then Jeffrey Dean Morgan is also in this as well. He plays Becky's father. And I thought, you know, even though he's in a smaller supporting role, I just loved seeing him in this. I thought he did a really great job. And so, yeah, this is just, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it for what it was. Nothing to write home about in terms of like blowing me away or anything, but not everything has to. To. This one was a good one. And I just found out they're making a sequel to this, which like, how do you make a sequel to a movie like this? I have no idea. It's going to be absurd, but am I going to watch it? Oh, you bet I am, especially since Scott Mann is directing again. I'm, I'm excited to see it. But anyway, I ended up giving Fall, directed by Scott Mann, three and a half out of five stars. Next up is actually a film from 2019, but I figured I would put in my thoughts on this one as well because I had to watch this before I watched the 2022 film. Sonic the Hedgehog, directed by Jeff Fowler. So this is a movie that I should have seen years ago. I have no idea why it took me so long to watch this one. Of course, this is based on the infamous video game character, and this is essentially an origin story of sorts. We are following Sonic as he is coming to befriend, essentially. Our main character's name is Tim, played by, played by James Marsden. And then we have Dr. Robotnik, played by Jim Carrey, coming in. At this point, he is working for the military and he's trying to figure out what's going on with this crazy blue creature that has been reportedly seen in this city of Green Hills, North Carolina, I think it was. And so this is just exactly like it's that. It is a family film. This is a really good film. It is feel good. It is genuinely funny. The effects on this look amazing. This one looked great on 4K as well. I think the second one looked even better though. But this is just like a heartwarming movie that I think has acted really well. Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik is everything you would want from a Jim Carrey performance. It felt very like the mask or just very 90s Jim Carrey again. And that was just so cool to see, especially for someone my age who grew up with 90s Jim Carrey, right? And so that was awesome. Just 
excellent characters. The story in this is touching. It's heartwarming. It feels genuine, which is uh, sometimes movies like this will get a little too saccharine. And I think this avoids that pretty well. Uh, this is just a really fun film that if you have kids or don't have kids, you absolutely should check this one out. It is just a ton of fun. So I, even though this is technically not part of my 2022 catch up, I'm still going to rate it. I gave Sonic the Hedgehog from 2019 directed by Jeff Fowler four out of five stars. So the last one for today is, of course, the sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. This one is also directed by Jeff Fowler. So we pick up basically where the first one leaves off. Sonic is settling in in Green Hills as part of the family, right? He's going to be with Tom and Maddie now, and he's going to stay with them. And everything seems to be going super smoothly until we have the return of Dr. Robotnik from the mushroom world he was banished to. And along with Dr. Robotnik, we have Knuckles, played by the wonderful Idris Elba, who I talked about recently in these wrap-ups because he was in Beast as well. But anyway, Idris Elba as Knuckles, fantastic. His voice is so different than the other animated voices in this. Like, it stands out perfectly. I loved him in this, and the character was just perfect. I thought it was so great. Uh, but on top of that, we also get the introduction of Tails. So we get Sonic, Knuckle, and Tails here. This is, and I'll, I'll mention, they are trying to find this emerald. That's what uh, Robotnik and Knuckles are trying to do, is find an emerald in order basically to take over the world, and Sonic needs to find it before they do and prevent that from happening. So that's the, the plot here. But basically, this is just everything the first film does, but turned up to 11. It is bigger and better in virtually every way. Like I said, I love the characters characters here. The relationship between our three animated characters, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, just awesome. Like, they were so funny together, and just, again, perfectly sweet. I just loved how they built that relationship, and watching Knuckles grow with his relationship with Dr. Robotnik, I thought was awesome. Arguably, Carrie is even more 90s Carrie in this one, because he's able to crank that knob up a little bit as well, and so go even more over the top. He looks more what we think of as Dr. Robotnik, if you're a fan of the game. Uh, it's just, it's so cool to see. And I'll also mention, there are so many homages to the video games in this uh, film. It is just awesome to see. I had such a blast. Now, I am not like the biggest Sonic aficionado at all. I've played a lot of the games, especially the 2D games, not, a, not as many as the 3D games, but I've played a lot of them, probably not beaten any of them, but I've played a lot of them over the years. And so even I, you know, as someone who is not an aficionado, even I was able to pick out some of those homages. So if you're someone who is a gamer as well as a movie lover, you'll probably appreciate that in the way that I did. Now, all of that said, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the absolutely absurd twist that takes place in the middle of this movie. I have no idea why they needed to go this route with it. Like, there were so many other things they could have done, and this was just so dumb. Fortunately, as dumb and as bad as that stupid twist was in the middle of it, it does really nothing to, like, make me appreciate this movie any less, because there's so much more around it that is just so much better than the first movie that I still loved it. So, I was easily able to overlook just how utterly ridiculous that twist twist was because everything else here is done so well. I love that they ended up going more action route with this one and less family. That said, the family element on this is strengthened a lot. And so I cannot wait to see Sonic 3. It's going to be amazing. It, I, it's one I absolutely will have to see in theaters because I loved both of these so much. So I just love that they were able to turn down that family element a little bit, but crank up the action and have it still feel like a movie from the same franchise as the first film. Just works really, really well. And they, they work really well in pairs. And I cannot wait to see the third one. It is going to be an absolute blast. So I ended up giving Sonic the Hedgehog 2, directed by Jeff. Fowler, four out of five stars. All right, so those were my thoughts for part three of my 2022 catch up. I'll make mention I have one more part left just because I'm back at work and I can't watch through these movies nearly as quickly as I was doing when I was off. So, yeah, part four is going to wrap it up, even though there are still 2022 films that I have not seen that I want to. I'm just going to wrap up this little segment or this special, whatever you want to call it, with part four and then move on. But anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are on these four movies and anything else 
else down in the comments below. Let me know what I got right, what I got wrong. Let me know why I'm crazy or why you agree with what I'm talking about. Let me know anything down in the comments below. I always appreciate any and all comments. So thank you guys so much for that support. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this one, please hit that like button down below. That engagement really does help me out. And like I always say, I don't just talk movies. I talk all things media, books, movies, video games, graphic novels, manga. If it's media related, I'm interested in it. And if you are too, you might consider subscribing. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for today. I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. And I want to encourage you to consume some media today. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>